Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene's.com Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 31, Obtaining Images. By now, most of you have seen me go from uh, the Home tab to the Image tab to obtain an image by clicking on the folder icon and obtaining my image usually from a file. I have not shown you how to do it from a Twain device. That's just another word for a scanner, which you might have to go down to the option to make sure you select the correct uh, scanner that's connected to your computer. So make sure that option is uh, checked to the correct scanner. And you can scan an image right into your PE design to use that as your template. Uh, but whenever I get a template that I'm going to use, I usually put it in a file. Uh, and I have to say, the majority of all the images that I get originally start out at Google. So everybody's Google, uh, I'm using the Google Chrome, so yours might not look like this when you first open it up. Uh, I'm going to click on Google Search. The main thing is you want to get to this recognizable uh, Google page that we all know uh, and it has the black bar on the top. So when you're looking for, uh, like I'm looking for a pink flamingo, I have a friend who's having a 50th birthday, so I'm going to go to the image uh, on this black bar and go click on images. That way when I type in a uh, pink flamingo, all I'm going to get are just hundreds of pink flamingo images. There's uh, many, many to choose from. And it's nice that you have that option because sometimes you, it's hard to find just what you want. But I have already previewed all these images. I already know which one I'm going to select. And that's this one here because it's nice and bright and it's kind of cartoony. As you can see, it's of a plastic pink flamingo. So it's going to be easy lines to follow and not have to figure out where I'm going to put my feathers. Uh, even though it's a very low resolution, it says here it's 300 by 220, I think it's going to work just fine. So how I'm going to get that image, uh, first of all, I don't know how your desktop looks, but if you don't have a convenient folder where you can easily find your images and your files, just right click anywhere on the desktop go down to new and then slide over to folder click on folder and then I'm going to type in temp for a temporary folder that I'm going to use now that I have this temporary folder made I'm going to click on the image that I've chosen I'm going to click on it uh, with left click and drag it over to the temp folder release it and now I should have, yes, there it says. It says images. Now, just about all the images uh, that you drag over here are either going to say images or some long number sequence. I like to just click once and then slowly click a second time. And I'm going to type in flamingo so I won't get mixed up with other images I might drag into my temporary folder. So now I have my image. Now, a lot of times when you're digitizing something, uh, when you go into a file or you scan something in, like this crab. I, I love this crab and I wanted to digitize an aggressive, angry looking crab. I said this is going to be a bear to digitize because it was hard to me to figure out how I was going to pass it and, or whether I was going to use an outline or whether I was just going to use color. So what I did is I went down to the little uh, print icon and I printed it off on my printer. Once it was printed off on my printer, I got my magic marker and I drew around it until I could easily define where I was going to put my green and some blue and blue and where I was going to put the red and how I was going to pass my outline. A lot of this guesswork. Um, so once I had that done, uh, I used that as my template for my uh, for my crab and as you can see uh, I was able to pass it and I was able to put some blue and some green and figure out exactly how I wanted this crab to be. Uh, the same with, uh, oh here's, here's one. I got this picture, uh, you can't see it very well, but it was a carousel horse that was in the newspaper. I said, oh that's really a cute little carousel horse. My daughter who likes horses, uh, I said, should, 
I'm going to do this for the ranch she was working at. So I just got my magic marker and directly on the newspaper sort of drew around what I thought uh, would be a good template. And uh, I used that as my template. And this was the horse that came out of that. It just sort of gave me an idea how I was going to do that horse and where I was going to put my where I was going to put my outlines. Uh, on some things that are real complicated, and I got this image from the Google uh, search engine, uh, image search engine, and it was very, this one was a bear, it was very complicated, so I did my outlines, but I also wrote, put the directions I wanted and how I, I was going to path it, what section. I even wrote down what colors would come first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, so that I would be sure to be able to bury all my running stitches. And uh, that came out rather well, too, and able to path the whole thing without any jump stitches. But with this pink flamingo here, we're going to uh, go to our image tab, go to the file, and we're going to uh, get our image from a file. And uh, if it didn't come up right away, you just have to look for your folder that you created and the name you gave it, and I put that for temp, and there's the flamingo. So I'm going to open that flamingo up smaller than I want so I need to uh, I want to maximize this hoop and unfortunately when you import images you can't push the control key and M for middle and have them center themselves like I showed you you can with the designs you create in uh, PE design but uh, that's that's okay we can more or less center it just by using our little tabs and using them through the crosshairs. So now that I have it more or less where I want it, I'm going to click, and now that image isn't going to move anywhere. There's one more thing I want to do to that image before we, I start digitizing. I want it just a little bit lighter, so I go over to this minus plus sign, and I'm going to slide it just a quarter more, so it's a little bit lighter, so I'll be able to see where I want to lay my stitches. So that is more or less how you get images from Google. Uh, I'm going to digitize this from the beginning to the end in our next lesson.